All right, welcome back, everyone. We've got our third series of the day going on. We've got, of course, Alliance versus Virtus Pro. Virtus Pro looking very dominant earlier on today. I believe it was our first series mm -hmm. uh, where they went and they 2 owed. And uh, now I think the question is, can Alliance come back? Because I think they also, do we have the standings here? Yes, I do. Uh, Alliance uh, lost their first series against OG, okay. uh, 0-2. And uh, this is now VP's second series. So it's both of the t these teams' second series. So not too much data. We got okay. to see VP's first game. I would say they looked quite good. Um, it sounded like, look, I'm just going to tell you guys straight. Sumail got me a, a fat amount of uh, <laughs> a of uh, fantasy, fantasy points, points yeah. in the ser first series, so I'm gonna say it was a Duncan. Well, that's kind of that was Kyle's tweet. He's like summarization of game one. It was like Sumail Duncan on an Alliance hoop kind of a thing. Mm, so yeah. uh, makes sense. Um, does that mean that Alliance is is weak? No, not necessarily. It could just be one series. Could be OG's TI form like normal. It could be Sumail's amazing, which he is. Um, who knows? But uh, this series, I would say VP favored, but. Who knows? Maybe Alliance is going to pull it together and uh, show some cool stuff. It'll be interesting, especially. I believe both of them ended the DPC at the very top of their regions as well. True. So this is definitely one of those uh, kind of duking it out, seeing which one is going to come out on top. And mm -hmm. uh, we said earlier, too, with VP, they were very quick with their drafting. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. So I'll be interested to see if Alliance has also got their entire idea, just not pre-scripted necessarily, but, uh, you know, if they've Ten got a very seconds. solid idea of how they want this game to go. Yeah, we'll see. Um, uh, Earthshaker is going to be the opening here. Um, they are also banning A in the first A A A in the first phase. Still pretty common here. Um, and then uh, the Rubik in the first phase. That's the weirdest one by far, without a doubt. What's up with the Rubik first phase ban? Perhaps they're worried about the fact that they have kind of some big team fight ultimates uh, in terms of you know with the Earthshaker. Um, nah. You don't ban. Okay, you, I don't you know. Don't I'm steal. just throwing something like, out Echo there. Like Echo Slam, by all means, can do a shitload of damage. Mm -hmm. But like most of the time, a lot of it is aftershock too, because it's like you Five echo like seconds. two heroes and you get like yeah. an extra 150 or something. So it's like it ends up being good. I mean, if there's like five heroes clumped, yeah, Echo Slam's still gonna be like godly to steal. But if anything, it's got to be like unless they're like planning to pick like Enigma or something or like mm -hmm. some really easy to steal strong ultimate. I have no freaking clue. I'm so confused. Unless unless there's like some strat that VP's been running with with Rubik or something. I mean, all these That's teams have weird. been scrimming quite a bit, so perhaps True. this is an inter-team meta sort of thing where they absolutely got trounced by a Rubik play at one point. Um, or yeah. perhaps, you know, they've been watching their pubs, they saw something that we didn't. So I'm sure there's a there's a reason behind it. I'm sure at this level. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's going to be a 10. reason. I'm just, I'm just mystified what, what it, what it mm -hmm. could be. Uh, and we haven't watched all the games, so who knows? Maybe they're... Maybe we missed some games where there was a Rubik play, but I'd be surprised because I thought everybody, from my perspective, was like, yeah, Rubik's straight up just not going to be good. So Ten seconds remain. I'm not sure. It's it's really interesting. Um, God, I wish I, I wish seconds. I knew the answer to that. I'm very curious now. We will find out for sure. But now we are getting that last ban over on the side of Alliance. And we do have some very meta picks coming out. We talked about, you know, Earthshaker being very, very popular. I figured it would be like him or Sand King, very popular picked up. I figured Tiny was going to get banned. It seemed too good from what it all the pros are saying. Banned. The Monkey King pick up. And then the Silencer, uh, also just one of those heroes that seems very, very powerful during that laning stage. Yeah. Very difficult to deal with until it gets later on when there are plenty of ways to dispel a lot of the things that he likes to put out. And those earlier, in and, and those earlier fights as well. Just the uh, global sounds was used really well by Undyne Ten earlier against uh, Versus Pro, so they definitely got to feel the taste of like how annoying sounds there was to play against. So Five I'm sure I assume it's gonna be Nightfall playing that. But um, yeah, they, they've got two great ways to silence. They've got roam potential. Uh, speaking of which, I don't think I've ever seen Save play Earth Spirit. I didn't really think it was like his type of hero, like this like aggressive tanky usually he plays like in my opinion like disable heavy heroes like he gets into the game by all means but it's always like squishier ones so he likes uh, lion and he likes shadow demon especially those are two that are yeah. really his, his and, favorites enchantress is the other one that yeah. i would say like micro type heroes like kind of finicky like like obviously Save is an amazing player he's mm -hmm. like he's very high mmr um i i really respect him as a player but, but what if this is gpk mid earth spirit oh you're right it could just easily be a core but I don't know. Uh, that's why. That, maybe that's why I'm Radiant confused. Um, maybe it's going to be four position silencer. I'd be surprised on that because it can kind of fall off, and then you're like, "Well, that's my four, and now he's a five. Mm -hmm. yeah, good luck, guys." But um, yeah, I'm excited to see how the rest of the draft goes. 
Um, uh, Storm Spirit Ban, Troll Ban. Troll's probably like the one hero Ten that can beat Monkey in the ulti, remain. I think is why. I think I have played Monkey versus Troll before, and that one felt bad. Mm -hmm. Five um, seconds remain. Because he just blinds you, and he turns on his ulti, and he's like, haha, I can actually win this one. Because like, getting to four hits felt impossible, so you never get a good stun heal, that kind of thing. So that one makes sense. Um, Storm can break trees, so I think they're just really looking to make sure that Monkey is going to have a good game. Very likely it's going to be Core Monkey, I think, by those bans. That's what it looks like to me, because mm. it's like if you don't need to protect your support monkey as much with bands, especially not the troll one. The troll one's like a fight to the death type thing. So, mm. what else we got? Morphling ban and Sven ban. Um, yeah, I'd say those are things, especially like uh, you know, Nico Baby really enjoys playing. It so is Dio's definitely want to take those out of the pool. Seems pretty meta as well. So yeah. no need to give that into the hands of someone who uh, yeah. feels very good. Right. And Sven's not really that weak to Earth Spirit. Like, Radiant he's going to, you silence him, you're like, you're not going to be able to burst him full to zero in a chain stun, for example. So um, makes sense. And if they are thinking about picking Puck, yeah, same thing. Like, dealing with Sven doesn't sound, it's possible, but, like, it's a lot to work with. Mm -hmm. Uh, but now they got the the old punch plus coil combo. That's always very fun to have. I like Ten that one. Uh, Puck pretty effective against Earthshaker generally to either disrupt Five backline seconds. or potentially interrupt his combo when he goes in. Mm -hmm. So I like that. We have to see what the next idea is here. Unless I would like to see something that hits buildings uh, for both teams, actually. Uh, I know that uh, currently, you know, with the lineup that they have over on VP, you've got the Disable, of course, um, and you've got very good, you know, ganking potential in terms of, like, the Earth Spirit and the Puck moving around together, but nothing really that hits those buildings just yet. And the same thing on the side of Alliance, because the Monkey King, while very good against heroes, not necessarily the best against buildings, and then, of course, Earth Shaker, uh, more there for, you know, the support for the Disable and then also for the team fights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely see... I. I'm not very good at Earthshaker myself, generally, but like the the amount of value that you can get sometimes from just like a long range one second stun is just so high because it's like you know if you have a shitty snowball or something if that's your initiation all of a sudden you just got a fissure to like it just like cleans up so much of your draft in a lot of ways and solves problems and fissure blocking is just like it just it's such a cool hero because it's so high skill I just I just really appreciate it like I I just. I can really respect watching people get the value out of it because I have trouble with that myself. So Ten just love seconds. watching Earth Shaker games. Fun to see him. Uh, like any team fight here as well. Like when, when they echo slammed Five in that Roche play last game, I was just like, was we're, we were both just like, oh. It's just, oh it's just <laughs> because it's such a satisfying thing. You it can is. just be like, oh my God, it's beautiful. And that it makes so much happen. The worst is like when you get a beautiful echo slam, but there's no follow up damage though, right? Yeah. You go in and you're like, oh, that was so cool, but we lost the team fight anyways. Oh, I saw an Earth Shaker. Recently, I think it was a pub game. Maybe it was like the most beautiful. Oh no, I was watching a, a replay. Actually, it was it was maybe like Tia qualifiers or some something else in China, where he found like a four man echo to initiate. So it's like he oh. saw four heroes. He echoed Venomanza. and he almost fissured, but he canceled it and he went to recast it. And then two of them used BKBs, and I felt so bad. I was like, it was like he got this like insane yeah. four man initiation and open ground. And he didn't chain stun it. Oh, I was like, oh my god, he found like the glory moon, but then he, then he messed it up. Ten bad. seconds remain. Hopefully, we don't see that. Venomancer. I think they're also hopeful Five that we don't seconds. see it. Either. Yes, they don't want they don't want to they don't want to have to deal with that. No, they don't. Uh, Venomancer, classically a great hero against Faces Void because you do all damage over time. He can't offset the damage. Um, you make him slow. Yes, if you have advantage, you can just run down the Veno or whatever. But with Earth Spirit, it's a good pairing because uh, Earth Spirit can catch. If he catches you, you get Galed. You're going to get slowed and take all that damage over time. And Earth Spirit can help frontline a bit for the Ten Void. So seconds. I think that's a cool combo. Um, yeah, we don't know who the five is five yet. Unless it's Monkey remain. King, I guess. But who will go with... Uh, let's see what they're banning. They're banning <laughs> a um, Legion Commander. So I guess they're expecting one of these as a five. Is it going to be like a... Void five or something kind of wacky. Uh, I don't. I might be the Monkey King. They might put the Monkey King as as a five or something like that because I feel like Void. We've been seeing a bit in China too. They were playing a lot of it uh, for a bit in that core position. Yeah, I, and, and yeah, I've usually seen it more as core, but I have seen some support. And There's the some support, yeah. For they're sure. they're banning offlaners, so surely one of these guys is a support. They're probably expecting like Monkey Five or Shaker Four mm. or something like that. I mean, that's a nice thing with this current patch meta is that everything, not everything, but like a lot of the positions and heroes are very flexible. They are, yeah. Yeah, that part is Ten always fun to watch. Remain. All right, Alliance has about 20 seconds left to snag their last hero. 
tons Five, of magic damage seconds. from VP. Not much physical yet. I'm sure their last hero will be a high physical damage carry, most likely. I like the Spectre Band. That would have been really effective to fit with the high mobility mm -hmm. and the team fight of VP. Oh, yeah. Would have made it really hard for Alliance to fight. So I like that band. Four seconds Dying. left, and they go with... Witch the doctor. Witch Doctor. <laughs> no one sees the last pick Witch Doctor coming. They really don't. The hero is <laughs> legitimately uh, pretty low win rate. I think at Divine and Above Pubs, obviously not the best sample size, right. he's like bottom 10 win rate, I think. Really? It's, it's not amazing. Um, they have seconds. been changing him a little bit. Uh, Maledict is still strong, of course. Five Cask does remain. ramps up damage mm -hmm. now. So, like, if you get that plus two Cask bounces, the last two do, like, 275 and, like, 300 damage. Mm -hmm. It's, like, a lot. So you can actually farm with it a little bit better, I found. I just played it yesterday. Um, you could also do Holy Locket build right. with the heal because um, there's that uh, 10 talent that reduces the mana cost by 25%. So that one's... I've, I've won games that way mm -hmm. um, where I'm just, like, we're death pushing because I'm healing, like... 55 HP per second in AoE. It's like mm. insane how much you can output. Um, so there's there's ways to abuse him, certainly. Um, in this game, it looks a little funky to me, to be honest. Um, he can lane stabilize. I think what they're I think they're doing the heal. the The goal here is like we need to win you the lane against Venom. Venom's going to do a lot of damage. Mm. We're just going to get heal level one. And that's a fun way to play him sometimes because people go into lane they're like, oh, I'm going to crush you, Witch Doctor. I'm just going to spam you. You're not going to be able to win these trades. And then you just get heal and like lots of regen and lots of mana regen. And then they're just like, oh. You're just out regening all of my damage because, like, I think that's what they're doing with the Witch Doctor. It's not so much about, like, all the other skills. It's like, we're trying to win the lane just for Faces sustain, Void. Basically. Yeah, win okay, the lane yeah, for, for Void, and then later on, we'll try to help out. He's going to be he's gonna be full garbage against Puck. He's going to maybe feel weak against Earth Spirit, but they just want to make sure Nico Baby has a good lane, and then he can transition to, like, chronoing Puck and winning team fights that way. I think that's what they're doing. Well, we'll find out. I mean, I feel like the last time you gave me this elaborate of an explanation, it ended up not He's being He's going to kick him <laughs> all the way out of the team fight. Guaranteed. I bet my life on it. Oh, dear. We'll miss you, Purge. I'll be... Uh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not going to... And it is uh, support Monkey King and three position Earthshaker. Okay. So they are going to do that. It is a pretty good... Um, Witchblade game for the Monkey King. A lot of spellcasters here. But yeah, this is going to be safe playing Earth Spirit. It's a Dusa. Um, going to be the hard carry. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's not that much single target damage on the Alliance side, so I'd say it's a pretty good Dusa game right now. DM playing Venno. Uh, I think a lot of this has to come down to, I'm sure Dusa is going to have a fine game. It's going to come down to like Puck and Venno and how far ahead they feel. Yes. If DM has a rough landing stage and plays from behind, it's going to feel really bad. But... And it, and it might be actually really dangerous. Like, that's actually a lane matchup where Witch Doctor's going to feel good. If you Maledict and stun a Venno, and you both go on him, he's going to have a bad time. Because, again, he can't defend himself very well. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's actually, like, a scary dual lane. Where FNG might still get heal level 1, level 2. But he could also just, like, Maledict kill DM with a little help from Nico Baby. All he needs is, like, one bash or, like, a Boots advantage or, like, an Orb of Venom. And, like, Venno is certainly going to lose a lot of health every time they go for that trade so yeah it'll be interesting to see if gpk wants to like wander about too along with say because right with the venom answer you just kind of want to plunk yourself down in the lane mm -hmm. you want to have all those wards in place so i have a feeling that you're going <laughs> to see a lot of movement going up towards the uh the lane that that DM necessarily is in with save with GBK once he gets that six, and they're just going to start applying that pressure because that's another problem with Void yep. is he doesn't catch up farm very well. That's true. Um, you kind of you, you don't jungle that fast either compared to almost all carries. You, you're supposed to kind of like win your lane, maybe get like one or two kills, and then do some mix of jungling and like map pressure. Um, yeah, maybe maybe they can make that work. I think yeah, DM on the Venno, that's the hero to watch, and both teams are smoking on the map. Let's see how the fight goes. <laughs> I like the one where you've got the do 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 sound. Yeah, that one's cool. I like that. Very musical. I enjoy that. Do you make that sound with his mouth? I believe we were not allowed to use. I believe that sounds like do 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 like definitely like mouth sound. Okay. <laughs> Ward's being placed over here. It's going to immediately probably get dewarded. Limp knows there's vision, and yeah, that was cool. He immediately crossed, um, stood within the tower vision range. Now they know um, right away. Yeah, they're, that, with Puck being there, it's very clear that a ward was there. So they get the deward, but Tuscan look at this. Walking right into several heroes over on the side of VP. This is York coming out from GPK. He wants that hit, but it's going to be safe. First kill, FNG. He's already got the Voodoo Restoration. I guess that Great answers Fisher. that question right there. But the Fissure comes out. Save is going to be forced to uh, just die, honestly. 
Yeah, Voodoo Restoration, genuinely, like, this is a bill, an ability that's actually underrated. Like, pe people, like, think, like, oh, it's all about Maledict and Stun, and it's great, but, like, 16 HP per second at the start of the game, he spent 100 mana on that, like, and he kept himself and his allies, like, full HP. That's pretty valuable when you think about how much people care about damage dealt and things like that, so. I know what spells have been picked up first here for sure. So FNG just throwing out the Buddha Restoration. It's going to make sure that they can go and secure that room. And back to the bot lane. Three mangoes, and he's got a clarity, so this will be just fine for he him. He's prepared. He's got one more centro. We'll see if he goes and blocks that one, but or blocks his camp, most likely. Um, and yeah, Venno went for Gale level 1, which is not that unexpected. It's pretty good, actually, for level 1, because it does 50 damage now. So you can actually last hit with it before you couldn't. Um, so it, it helps make up for the fact that his base damage is like 43 on average. It's really bad. But the, the poison and magic damage is really the value of the heroes. So once he hits like level 2 and stuff, it'll be a little different. So it feels like there's not going to be a whole heck of a lot going on in this bottom lane. Here that We do have just the heal bot, which is FNG on the Witch Doctor. And of course, you know, Faceless Void, they just want to hit. They yeah. just want to be able to last hit. We're not going to see super aggression. The only thing I can think of is perhaps FNG, you know, maybe too far forward at some point does eventually get punished by save and DM. Yeah, oh, and he with that um, early kill that he got, he got a fast Sage's Mask. This is a great item for increasing your mana regen in the laning stage. He had 1.1 without it, now he's up to 1.8. So it's, uh, you know, basically got really popular for a while there, but honestly, like, the Sage's Mask some games can feel excellent as a, as an early support item, especially like this where your mana needs are going to be higher. So, um, Sage will eventually find that Sentry Ward here. It looks like uh, they'll be able to control that. So the small camp is for sure blocked for all. He does end up Finishing what? the basey as well. Where Not a great I item go? for Phase's Void, well, I gotta say. It doesn't really do much for him, but uh, hey, for himself, look at this. Look yes. at this heals. Pushing. Gale. Not quite Gale. as afraid here. Look at this heal coming right back out. Save. Just spot out this courier. Not gonna go for it. I will say in the top lane, though, they have been very effective of zoning S4 out. He's found it very, very difficult to approach here. He's had Kingslayer just hitting him constantly. He's trying to get any sort of XP that he can. Simultaneously, not uh, you know, offering up any int along the way. Well, he can't. You can only still int if you level Glaives of Wisdom. Right. It's actually like the most frustrating part about playing Silencer right now. It's like you have to skill Curse and Last Word because it just does way more damage. But that's like, but if you get kills, you don't get the victory and the pleasure of knowing that you stole their brains. Uh oh, FNG, I think your timing is just up at this point. You are on borrow time, so to speak. And uh, they won't be able to turn it back around. Get a kill on DM. That is, of course, the we all know so alive. Definitely. pretty valuable. It's so worth it for Alliance there. Keep your carry alive, get him towards his items faster, you can kill the offlaner. Like, heck yes, if he didn't buy out or something, you're, you're happy. Hanskin getting some chase in here. Went for the Jingu. This is actually not Ooh, always the Fisher. most common. This is actually a weird build. He's got to get Gets himself him. a kill because of that weird build. Oh. So the build that everybody does is Primal Spring. It's a lot of damage. You use it to chase with Orb of Venom, but instead he's like, screw it, I'm not using my skills yet. He's like, I'm going to get Jingu and Boundless, and I'm going to get a kill. And against the Silencer, it's really good, because Silencer can't stop you from hitting him. He just slows your movement speed. But that's not enough when, when he's got a, a, an Orb of Venom. So this is a cool adjustment that makes a lot of sense in this matchup here. Like, he can actually just zone Kingslayer if he gets on top of him. I actually really love the fact that he's very dynamic with this particular build as well. Because too often you see, you know, kind of the same things because it's meta or whatnot. A little bit of a dodge there. Might be in some trouble. Can he teleport out in time? Yes. Nice. We'll be able to about 80 hit points left. Impurities. Spent some good mana on that too. So not bad. Really, yeah. really nice movement. And the best part is the creep wave was under tower anyways. So there's like literally nothing for him to do while he was, like, it doesn't bother him at all to be gone in this moment. And he transforms. Gonna run back at high movement speed. And he finishes his orb of corrosion. So it's gonna not hurt S4 too much in the grand scheme of things. Very efficient. It's what we like to see as Dota players. Do see that save is making this rotation Dyer's over to the mid lane. Is in danger. Limp, of course, just focused on uh, hitting some of these creeps. He's going to reveal himself as they walk right on over. He's going to be able to scare up these water rooms. That was nice of uh, GP Cave to go top because he, he knew he was over there doing something. He gets to contest that one. Now he gets to do the double water rune if he so chooses. I mean, why would you not, honestly? Can't let GP or can't let Limp get that free regen. No, it's man. No, <laughs> you can't. Big deal in the laning stage. So he gets both full mana. With that said, Limp is not that punished. She's got his free drop. He's got a parody in the backpack. So he's he's gonna have options. For sure. 
sure. Hanskin in the top lane, though, taking a lot of damage here. Blue turns back around, throws at the Boundless. Should be able Ooh, it's close. That snake coming in hot. Yeah, I'll be able to secure the kill. Game, game the chat line as the snake was going on. Maybe that's the other lane. Bot lane's fighting, actually, Bot once again. Bot lane is uh, scrapping back and forth. It's like one of those things where Alliance probably just wants to fight because they're like, well, we might as well. We're, we're just going to offset the heals. And, and FNG's just not even going Maladin. It makes sense here. Yeah. Um, the, the mana regen goes up by 50%. The heal goes up by 50 And with all this mana regen he's got, they're happy to hit their opponents. Screw it. Slap them. A little bit of a water delivery here for Lim from the mid lane. Hans stopping by. That helps too. Great way to offset the, uh, the regen disadvantage. Gale hits FNG. FNG does not care too much. Level 2 Gale does do a lot of damage, by the way, so it can be a bit scary. Um, it's like just over 300 damage or something like that. So if this man didn't have a built in heal, I would feel bad for FNG's regen right now, but he's fine. S4, pretty low top lane as well. Still getting bullied by the Dusa. You don't really see Dusa like stomp lane matchups that often. That's well, not stomp. It's, it's, it's not even stomp. I think it's the problem is just the silencer is just really, really annoying for him every time he tries to go too close or whatnot. Uh, but, I mean, he's doing a good job. He's still getting the levels. He's not getting the farm, but he's getting the levels. And I think that's sometimes the best that you can hope for yeah. uh, as an offlaner. Hans gets doing a lot of scouting. It is it a double damage. It feels good to be room. this good. Aww. It just seems fine, actually. Like, I, I really thought every time I looked up there, he was getting, like, beat up. Like, his regen was being really cool. He got ate a fat snake just now. But he's got 28 last hits. It's really not that bad. Um, but he does have ult. He's just taking a lot of damage. He's rushing treads, too. Going for some enchant totem builds, it seems like. Okay, popping the double damage over in the mid lane. Does have the Cardi wave, so it looks like he's going to try to put some damage out here in the mid lane. So scary to come forward. If he does, coil, roll, punch, limb dies. Guaranteed. But they walk away. They find themselves an FNG. A couple of hits off, has the uh, Dream Coil, get the kill on FNG. Limp now going to try to put out some of this damage, try to buy some more time. There's a lot of heroes here. Hanskin, though, will be able to follow up, save having to be careful. Might take too much damage. GP Kaleo, the roll forward though. Save, he really wants this kill. Is he going to be able to get it though? Is the question. I think Lip's going to be able to get the kill before he's going to be able to fall. That DD. He doesn't get uh -oh, that DK. kill. Uh-oh, DK. Hanskin looking for this opening. Finds the kill on the pot. Big clean up there. Really nicely done by both of them. Lip barely survives. Gets out with like that one hit. Cleans up the Earth Spirit. Turns. Almost gets away from Puck, but Hans can clean that. Look at his level now. He just hit level five. Yeah, Those are very good about that. Big moments where you get a solo kill on like the enemy core like that for a trade. And Hans gonna be able to abuse these levels for like a long period of time here because he's gonna hit, hit six faster, and he's probably not necessarily gonna get his ulti, but. Lim, follow up, King Slayer. They do get the silence, but it's a lot of damage, so they're still gonna burn down the silencer. Lim, though, with that rotation here from Safe, he's gonna turn back around. Is he gonna just chase down Safe again after chase? Oh my word! Certainly dead, though. Certainly dead, but not without taking someone else down with them. That's one of those ones where you're like, you got the kill, but uh, probably not worth it. But either way, um, with Hanskin having these extra levels, man, it's gonna it's gonna help him out. Just make his uh, his laning stage even better. More Jingu points, more boundless. Basically, skill points on Monkey King are just really valuable for for getting stuff done. So it doesn't have to be his ulti, but good for him to to get these level advantages. Delivery and they'll go for the smoke play. They've got the Dream Coil back up and they're hoping to get the they jump perhaps on FNG or Nico Baby. But like you said, they're hugging the tower. They've got the Voodoo Restoration up already. And they do have the Chronosphere. Look at this. We're also seeing another TP. They're looking to fight. Excuse me. You gotta be careful with that ward. The fact that I got attacked there is kind of weird. I wonder if they're gonna notice. Like it reveals that monkey's in the area or they have some kind of vision. So I feel like they you might want to just back off, right? If they're that prepared, unless they're feeling very, very confident. They're like, please kill FNG. Three <laughs> points heal. He's ready, baby. Yeah, he's so ready. 32 HP per second. Good luck killing him. This is a get down, Mr. President sort of situation. It really is. Oh, and the sentry behind to get the D ward. Oh, that was great. Yeah, they just back off. That, that great, that maybe a little greedy. I, I would just kind of um, say that was greedy by King Slayer to smoke. There. They could have backed up for like five seconds, like, you know, a little bit of time, then smoked and done this rotation. And it wouldn't have been so obviously right. Maybe Alliance reads it anyways, but, you know, that was a nice little moment for Alliance. They buy some time, Nico Wavy lose a little farm, but they see the rotation coming. Behold! 
for doing everything he can. So Leech does go for the Echo Slam, though, over here on Safe. Followed up with the Fissure. Limp has made his own rotation. Not quite enough damage, though, to take down the Earth Spirit. So we'll see a rotation now from GPK. Looking to punish, looking to see who else is in the area. Still holding on to that Dream Coil. He's going to go and drop immediately over here onto Limp. He's taking a lot of damage because Nightfall is still in the vicinity. So they will end up losing the Lashrek. That was like four heroes on Limp there. I, th I thought he made it out no problem because he saw the puck TP and he instantly backed very good discipline there, but walked into the rest and uh, they get that rotation punished. A lot of TPs though, and that means that they have to take time to cross the map, and in the meantime, not the worst for Alliance, especially Nico Baby. Still taking some damage in the bot lane, but he's getting pretty close to his Maelstrom, so can't help but think that he's doing a decent job. Time walking off some of the Gale damage that he's been taking here, but... Yeah, team just playing pretty standard Venno, going for uh, Treads, Urn, Likely Hood, needs to get a little tanky, and then he's just going to focus a lot on farming. That makes sense. Yeah, so the tower down here, so that's going to be one of his other priorities. <laughs> he's continuously yeah. setting up in this lane, making it difficult for Void to approach without having any other plus ones. But uh, VP now combing through the jungle, saving GPK. This is what I was wondering, remember, during the draft, is how tightly they were going to play together. Don't have that Dream Coil up for another 13 seconds. They just keep hunting after Limp, but save learning his lesson from last time. I was like, mm, he does just too much damage for right now. Uh, he's going to throw down some wards, and I'm going to just hang out with the homies. Unless he's able to finish his hood, which he clearly needs. He keeps having these like small moments where he almost kills a bunch of people, but doesn't always work no. out. Silence, double damage going for the snap, and that's just a dead faceless void. Very well executed from the side of the game. Oh, and all the all the tips. That was a big one. Big kill. Um, kind of a mistake there by by Void uh, in a lot of ways. Like he saw the rolling boulder come in. Maybe he thought it was just Earth Spirit. Limp gets a kill on the bot lane. They run at DM finally here. With help from Hanskin. But, um, you know, if you see the... He, he maybe could have guessed that there was going to be more people there, is what I'm trying to say. And therefore, been a little bit more careful in the mid lane. So, maybe sloppy death for Nico Baby there. But, he'll defend mid. Well, they immediately used that information to their advantage, too. The fact that, you know, they rotated down, tried to uh, put some pressure on DM, knowing that there were several heroes over in the mid lane, jumping on their void. And uh, like we said, a Venomancer just wants to set up in one lane, not really leave it until he's been taking the tower. So kind of like an old style brood mother. Yeah, that's pretty great. How you want to do it. Venom cancel his TP. Ooh, that hurts. He tried to TP bottom to refill a bottle for GPK, but he uh, he must have done something. That's a rough one. It doesn't happen too often in pro games, but you know, it's a tense moment. There's mistakes or land happen. too. It's land. It's a lot of different stressors, perhaps, or, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So pressure continues on the map here. FNG is trying to set up for the top tower. Kingslayer is like, okay, time to leave. Um, S4 has got his blink dagger basically finished, though. So S4 having a really solid game. His net worth has been really consistently high this this match. And he's TPing back, gets his blink dagger, and he's going to go probably run bottom is my guess. Because if he gets bottom quick, they can maybe take a fight. That or he anticipates mid. And right now he's running mid, so he's anticipating a dive on his allies in the mid lane. Dyer's top tower is he wants to make a big team fight impact Dyer's right now. For enemy. There's a smoke play. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. We're waiting for that setup. Um, skin getting into position here. Trying to get as much information as possible. We're creeping forward just a little bit. Let's get as much information as well. DM come back. All right, here he comes. He's the top him. lane. They managed to go. They use the chronosphere. They get a kill. And is on the position five. But All right, DM's going to die now. Here he comes. Is he? Is he going to go? Because they're jumping over onto the side. They get the kill on save. On save. Yeah, I guess it, it's a little hard. He could have, like, solo echo slammed him or something, but he's going to pop hood, and the chance that you end up killing him by yourself is low. But they end up killing save instead. Still pretty good. Obviously, they prefer Venno kill, but that's fine. They get one, and they got the Chrono Kill top, and now Nico's pressuring the top tower. He's got his mouse room finished. Uh, Deuce's net worth is still very high. Uh, Nightfall has not been touched, basically. They've kind of just been stabilizing lanes, but they'll get there. They have some solutions against her, some things they could buy that might be effective. I feel like we've barely talked about Nightfall this entire time, and I feel yeah. like that's that's such a bad sign for a line Radiant that we haven't really taken a hard look at Nightfall because he's just had so much space to be able to farm and get what he needs. Because he's cer certainly on top of the net worth right now, 8.3k. Next closest is Nico Baby, 
Breaks the smoke. Breaks the smoke. Throws out the cast. Followed up with a fissure. S4. Nice global silence, though. Will force them back as they are double silenced on top of that with the waning rift. Hands again looking for the opening. FNG, of course, will fall. Hands again, again jumping forward. That's going to be the stone gaze. Might be able to get themselves Kingslayer again. The roll forward, though, over to S4. Safe just going perhaps a bit too far. Adjusting those limits just a little too hard. GBK will be able to finally finish off over onto Hanskin. Eagle Baby looking for this opening again, trying to find this puck. They immediately find him in the corner, and that is a dead GBK. <laughs> That's for Zoni in this game, actually. Like, he turned on a dime the moment that that global happened, and he re-engaged perfectly. FNG got his heal off for global as well, which is perfect. Bought them some seconds. And then they get to re-engage, gets the fissure. Guesses perfectly with the enchant jump. And just like Maxi Enchant showed him out, like he's so ready to play this hero from a damage perspective. Like the other when we saw DM play S or play Earthshaker before, it was like he just went one one four. He was all about team fight AoE, but Earthshaker's ready to like slap people with the totem. And it, it's paying off in these little fights, so still a K gold advantage for Rotus Pro. Um Mainly because Deuce's net worth is really, really high, but Void is a hero that catches up slowly by winning fights over time. So it's not looking terrible for Alliance at all. They're definitely in this game. They're still neck and neck too, if you look in terms of that uh, of the gold discrepancy. It's only a 1k net worth lead going to the side of VP. It's skewed a little bit, obviously. It's a Medusa. Medusa is always going to, you know, have a. Well, you, you hope, anyways, it's going yep. to have, you know, high, high net worth. But while well, Balin, there was a coil, but he instantly broke it at the exact same moment. A little unfortunate for Puck. It was like he was already in the air, so the coil stunned him, but he was like stunned while flying, so basically just didn't do anything good. Rough one there from Monkey. If it was just a fraction of a second earlier, he's in place. Puck can actually go for a kill with the with the Witch Blade, but so wasted coil, uh, unfortunately for them, and that's going to give Alliance a nice moment. You can see that they're making their push over here to the mid lane. There's not a lot of these wards set up again from DM. The Echo Slam over onto DM. They just want to get rid of him. They don't want to have to deal with this, though. So they'll be able to wipe him off this mid lane currently. The roll forward, though, coming out from safe. A little bit short here. Does manage to get the slow of silence following up? Nice. You see Nightfall. Oh, but the Chronosphere from Nico, baby, over on the back side. They'll be able to, again, take down Kingslayer. Needs to do a little bit more than that, but the Stone Gaze coming out from Nightfall. This is looking like FNG is definitely going to pay for this. And that Buddha Restoration is not going to allow him enough healing to survive. Just not enough oomph there, unfortunately. <laughs> they need, like, the, I don't know, the Monkey King ulti to be down on Chronosphere or Leshrac to be in there with them doing damage. Because right now, Nico Baby's damage is okay, but, you know, classically, you just, it takes some time to get online with this hero. At least right now, you buy a lot of survivability items. Oh, GPK, he sees Nico Baby, gets the silence. He's not going to be able to lock him down for long enough, I don't think. Oh, never mind, as I say that! There it is, Purge. There's that kick you were looking yeah. for. Great catch. Now. Great catch by GPK. Um, gets the silence off, buys just enough time for his ulti to come off cooldown, and then, yeah, that was enough. Her spirit rolls in, too. I thought he was going to be able to get away, no problem. I was like, that silence again, he's going to jump, no big deal. But That's what I think. I just did not, ex you know, save. We talked about it. He's not necessarily the person we think of when we think of someone playing Earth spirit, but clearly he's been practicing. He looks good. And maybe he played it before, and they just decided that it, was, it wasn't good in the meta for a while, and we're missing out, you know, but... Um, yeah, it's been doing great. Um, Limp had such a good start, but everything's kind of fallen off a bit. Some of these, uh, you know, he has to play aggressive naturally, and some of these deaths have maybe cost him a bit too much. His net worth is falling behind a little, but uh, GPK has gotten some great kills. And Dusa continues to pressure, as does DM. DM has Spirit Vessel. He's got a fluffy hat to get a four staff. His raw HP is very high, which you need to do on the Venno to, to stay survivable to the front line. The downside when you play Venocore though is it's sometimes hard to like force fights on your opponents. But Puck and Earth Spirit are excellent at that on the bright side. Well, Nightfall is definitely having a very good time. Just finished up the Scotty. This is a very scary Dusa. Let's get jumping down, jumping right back up again. Pretty normal stuff. You just want to like counter push these lanes as much as you can. But he wants to go fight now, so he's TP to the mid lane. Um, they have to fight. They're going for the Echo Slam. They want to take out GPK, but immediately the Silence in play. Turning back around Silence plus the Dream Coil. The way patiently. Nightfall teleporting up as well. FNG gets taken out by DM on the other side. There's a whole other fight going down. They're still hunting, hoping maybe they can find S4 again. He's already used that Echo. Nico Baby hiding Horn does not have the Chronosphere up for another 10 seconds. They're on the hunt. They can't seem to quite find him, though. They do do a couple pings. 
three orb save. They find him. The silence coming out over on Nico. Maybe yet again the tip coming out from Kingslayer. Just trying to tilt him. They will be able to just wipe Nico Baby out here in the forest. <laughs> Rough one. Man, he, he had a pretty good early game, but all of a sudden, just the last two engagements, they just punished the crap out of him. And in the meantime, not happening in Nightfall. Nightfall's having a great time killing towers, pushing creepways. His Scotty's finished. He's almost got an SNY, so his uh, uh, status resistance is going to be higher. Somebody's dropping items. Oh, they're just slippers. Okay, we're okay. Wait, we haven't reached that level of BM yet. Wait, come on, because it's DI. Like, surely you don't throw your DI games. Cleans up his ancients. Uh, now looking for more. They definitely looking for more. In fact, they can see FNG and S4 over here. Fissure comes out from S4. It's gonna blink away. They're gonna just start dropping plague wards left and right, trying to get more information, trying to uh, just establish this area in control for BP. Doing a great job. And now the Veno has all these Bottom lane. Nice. <laughs> They're just poking away at Olympia. trying to get some split pushing done, but he's not gonna be able to. It, it just feels like they're getting so much done with GPK and uh, and save. They just are completely pressuring the map. <laughs> Won't let them do anything. They just keep punishing. And every time that somebody dies like this, that's 40 seconds that the Alliance is going to be struggling against the map pressure. Like, constantly DM is spamming wards down, putting the creep waves on their side of the map, preventing Alliance from getting away from the center. And therefore, it's easier for VP to, VP to find these kills rapidly for their pressure to feel continuous. And that's why they're up to 7k right now. It's, it doesn't stop. More gets spotted out. Plenty of silence, plenty of control. That's yeah, Dead Earth Shaker. <laughs> Ooh, costly. Go baby, of course, over here. He did use that smoke to seat. He wanted to fight. Is that the BKB online? But now he goes to push the creep with, and look at this, Puck's already here for it. Yep. He has to jump away so the smoke doesn't break, but it'll hang out a little bit, most likely. Maybe hit neutrals, catch the next wave or something, but man, the, the absolute dominance. This is probably the most one-sided game we've seen yet today. I feel like. VP's just playing so well. I mean, that was something that we noticed during DPC. They play very, very clean. They know exactly what their item timings are. They know where to go. They might be able to get something here against Nightfall. Not sure they have quite enough lockdown, though. Ball just turning back around, has already used the stone gaze, trying to force them away, limp. Trying to teleport out, should be able to do it. Han skin jumping over onto the tree line. Nightfall <laughs> just backing off here. DM is still in the vicinity. Aww. Draw some of these little wards, gets a hop down here from DM, but of course Nightfall's still nearby, so has to be exceedingly careful. S4 is here. Got that spirit vessel charge, he's just gonna try to teleport out. It looks like they have nothing to cancel it, so. Good Fissure too. And uh, in the meantime, when Nico Baby is up hitting creeps, he Earth Spirit went on him, said like, I'm gonna do some damage to you. Nico, Nico ends up popping BKB and killing him. He had to chrono the puck to escape and pop BKB. I think I said that already. But um, cost him some resources, he gets the kill. Not the worst, but if they can kill Deucey here, this would be really big. No saw or no uh, Deuce ulti for 45. But they need to approach at a good angle. Unfortunately, it's so hard. You basically have to smoke every time you want to fight because you have to run through these plague wards. Because if you don't, the, the Plague Wars are going to attack you, you can't blink. Everything just feels bad. I think they really thought that uh, Dusu was going to swing back around and start hitting that tier 2, but he's doing the safe thing, going to the opposite side of the map, knowing that his ulti is on cooldown. He doesn't want to stay there right now. And they find a Venom in the middle. They do find a DM. He's going to go throw off the Poison Nova right before going down, but there's no thing else there for, uh, for follow-up damage. So it feels more like a minor irritant more than anything else. So uh, here comes GPK. So they are ticked down a little bit here. As for the silence, global silence comes out to follow to get a little bit more damage. As for sitting very, very low. That's a double kill now for Nightfall. Nico Baby is in the middle of everything, but look at the damage coming out. He doesn't have enough here to survive. They're just going to chase him away. He doesn't have the chronos. He's just dead. Nightfall is just too big and too scary for him to deal with. Yeah, he just doesn't have enough damage, period. He, he has to get BKB this game because he's against a puck, but the, the relative net worth differences are just hurting him a lot. Like, Void needs to ride this like train of getting pickoffs here and there, and he's just not able to do it here. His cores are just falling too far behind. On skin, and comes Nightfall. He says, don't worry, I will clean up. Gets the crits, gets the damage, another kill, more now with the bench. 6 0 and 6 for Nightfall in this match. It is looking good. Uh, 11k gold advantage here. They're even standing in front of towers, trying to give the high fives class. I'm surprised he's Classic. not PPD chatlining him right now. 
I feel like what I've been seeing mostly, and I want to look at the, the tower damage later, I feel like Nightfall just walks to a lane, starts hitting a tower, and then when everybody rotates, they either take a fight or he just backs off a little bit. Yep, that's the way to do it, especially with the Dragonlance on Medusa, because your attack range, and most range heroes, if you're, if you're a tower hitter that's ranged at like a long range, you just get Dragonlance and then you outrange the tower. So there's like, you literally don't even need much of a creep wave, you just sit there hitting the tower, and most of the time it just dies. Or yeah. you have to rotate heroes, it's really resource expensive to deal with that. And then if they don't know where their heroes are, it's scary to even consider jumping on the Medusa, because if you jump on them and they're actually nearby, it's like, oh man, we're gonna get crushed, die, lose that tower, and probably yeah. get our Rax pressure. So, it's, to have to like decide what to do is very difficult. And now he just finishes off the Aegis. BP being super efficient, already across the map, oh ready gosh, to get a catch. Oh my gosh, immediately saved, just rolling on in with the kick back here. DM coming forward <laughs> with the nuke, and that's a dead handskin. No monkey for 40-something seconds. Does, of course, have the buyback if necessary. Just so efficient. They get Roche low, Nightfall finishes it, they start walking. So when Roche gets taken, they're like, all right, we have like 10 seconds to do something. Nope, we're already there, jumping on you, getting a kill, and that's going to buy our next 40 seconds. Or force a buyback. Roll forward again here from save, going pretty deep because they found themselves FNG. Save perhaps going just a little bit too far, but they do manage to get the kill first on FNG S4. He's taking so much damage, he's just trying to turn back around, wait for that science to come off, but Nightfall, again, just too much coming out from this hero. Spy back now coming out from FNG. They're going to try to push them back. That's a heal. Uh, it's, it's really hard. They can Chronosphere, but they're going to What's going to happen alive. after that, though? Yes, they Chronosphere, but... I'm concerned. FNG, he just bought back. That's a dieback now. Nightfall just turning around. Hits the buildings again. 60 second dieback. Not too bad. Hanskin's going to try to slow this down, but he can't approach. If he gets caught by Puck, he's in trouble. Now that, that's indeed the problem here with this GPK Puck is that he's just allowed to be the aggressor. They don't have any solutions for it. There's just too many things that it feels like Alliance needs to do right now. There's a, there's a tower up over here, so they will yeah. be forced back. They're like, oh, I wanted to kill that top rack here. I mean, that's what it felt like, for sure. But you know what? The creep wave is here. Everybody's still in position. Night Nightfall's full Daedalus is finished. She's almost 25. Isn't that insane? That's insane. It's a 26-minute game. And it, you Hello? got a 25. All right, they're going to try to make moves on Nightfall. Again, they burn through all the mana. Still has that Aegis, though, so they need to be careful they don't dump everything on him. All right, looks like they should be able to take down the Aegis. He's coming right back up again. The roll, though, coming out, plus the Global Silence. Look, he just ticks down. He goes down so quickly, and he does not have buyback for a minute. <laughs> it just looks so, <laughs> that's so casually. Hans getting in trouble now, trying to slow this down. He's but trying, I think this but I don't game. think, I think this game is just hemorrhaging at this point. They have to get in there, but it's so hard. The Plague Wards, everyone's really tanky. Nightfall's basically unkillable. How can they get in there? Oh, that, that's a question that Alliance is asking themselves right now, because even if they get in there, even if they land a beautiful Chronosphere, do they have enough damage even at this point? Not to kill Dusa. That one's really hard. Yes. It, it has to be it has like, to be like Silencer. Again, all right, there's the Echo Slam. Follow the Silence. They have the BKB and Eagle Baby, but he just takes too much. Again, buy back now. Coming up around him. As for he falls, this Chronosphere, it was so nice, but it just doesn't have the damage. The GG gets called. Alliance has had enough. They're ready to move on to a fresh new game, get a fresh new start, and BP just rolling on over them. They, they just, yeah, they, they got so far behind so quickly. Like, all those early mid-game fights were, were fine. They, they got their kills, they got their pickoffs here and there, they got Blink Dagger pretty quick on Earthshaker. Uh, and then we're like, oh yeah, that's right, there's Medusa in the game. And she's got like 1,500, 2,000 net worth over your, your other carry. And again, they just pressured so well. Uh, I think it was GPK and I think it was safe. Those those two guys just went around the map getting stuff done. DM did played his role very correctly too. Like he he laned well, mm -hmm. he pushed lanes, he skill builded to like max out wards as fast as possible. He's like, I'm not gonna really get a kill on Nico Baby. Nico Baby's gonna play safe. I'm just gonna get one poison sting, I'm gonna max out wards, I'm gonna constantly pressure the map, and then my puck and my Earth Spirit are just gonna round getting kills. And with that said, we can still criticize Nico Baby. He died mid that one time, um, right after um, I believe Limp almost got caught by Earth Spirit. Mm -hmm. Like, he got coil punched immediately afterwards. That kill needs to not happen. There's, like, little things like that that add up that, like, delayed his BKB and therefore delayed any attack speed and any hope of him getting chrono kills. So, certainly, um, there's uh, some justification to blame Alliance for this loss, but it's also VP playing, like, really good. They as, played so good. I was about to say, like, you can't diminish that away because, you know, yeah, you know, did Nico Baby get caught out a couple times? Yes, but the way that they were playing, the aggression that they were bringing, especially when you have a Puck, when you have an Earth Spirit who just, they have the freedom to go wherever they want, that just makes the game so much harder. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, you know, again, Nightfall, again, perfect. 10, 0, and 8. I feel like I see this guy consistently just very minimal death. Same thing with GPK. I believe, I think there was like a whole DPC season where he almost didn't die once. He, he broke 1,000 XPM on Nightfall as well, yeah. which makes sense. He got 25 right there before the game ended. That's incredible performance by him. That yeah. was great. What a game. Fun what, to watch. What a game. Exactly. That's well, how Deuce oh. is supposed to work, guys. If you're not doing it like that, you're bad. Okay. That's all. Well, wow, that was um, very <laughs> uplifting and positive. Thank you, Purge. Uh, but yeah, this is, of course, a best of two series. So for this first match, Virtus Pro will be taking it with very clean, very nice looking Dota. And uh, we're going to see if Alliance is going to be able to strike back and even it out with a 1 1.
And we are back with game number two of VP versus Alliance. Game number one, VP looked very, very dominant and played some very nice looking Dota. Alliance had these moments where they were looking very, very strong, but unfortunately the aggression that came out from VP just ended up being too strong for them to handle. It was, yeah. And Alliance had some great moments, but uh, things just felt a little disconnected. Um, they didn't necessarily have enough damage to deal with the Deuce of the lineup. It's like they, they, they crushed the rest of the lineup for a while, but at some point it was like you either need to like start threatening the do so or you need to like crush the enemy team harder in map control and they they had issues with that with the heroes they did so then all of a sudden the game kind of just blew up and uh, they got too far behind so maybe a very different game this game uh in terms of that so far let's hop into the draft we got uh, bands of monkey king and silencer in the first phase by vp heroes that uh, were in the previous game and then we're gonna see a tiny band tiny's I, I haven't seen him once today. No. I guess he's going to be the most banned. Oh, I mean, I'm going to get those points, dude. I'm going to get them. Is that what you put on? Yeah, I said that he Ten was going to get banned. Seconds. He's the most banned hero. I can't remember if I put him there in the end. Five seconds. I'm so like check. everybody everybody was talking about him, and I feel like if yeah. everyone's talking about him, there's a very high chance that... Uh, I put Monkey King Monkey as most King. banned. I mean, the days, are, the days are early. Monkey King did just get banned. I did do uh, Urshaker most picked hero, which is so far looking pretty good. Because we've gotten yeah, quite Sand a... Sand King. I haven't seen a that could evolve. Uh, no, we did. Evolve. We literally did see a sand king. Yeah, we did earlier see a sand king earlier. <laughs> I was gonna be like, oh, I haven't seen a sand king yet. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay. Short-term memory, not a uh, not your sport day there, yeah, champ. I'm missing a lot of brain cells uh, from various things. <laughs> At least you didn't get a seven for int. Impossible. <laughs> That's true. I have more than seven intelligence in D and D. Oh, poor Jenkins. That's like the level of a cat. He's got the intelligence of are a cat. Are cats smarter than dogs in D and D? I guess they are in real life too. Generally, That's dogs not always learn true, better. I feel Although I feel like cats just ignore. Dogs are also much more bred for Loyal. purposes. Yeah, obedience. Versus cats are more like, probably more aesthetics Ten typically. Whereas dogs are like, I need my dog to do X insane task because we're actually going to use it like a machine. Nobody does that for cats really, right? I mean, I'm gonna make a maybe. battle. I'm gonna breed a battle cat, you know. Do it! Oh my god, that'd be so cool. Why, why don't you just get a lion? Assassin so, cat. No, get you get an assassin cat. It's true, you could. He said this, the climb through, you, cats are liquid. You could go anywhere if you taught that cat. That. Anyways, I digress. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> we do have the uh, the IO pickup over on the side of EP, and we have a Night Stalker and a Marana uh, pickup over on the side of Alliance. Night themed on the dire side. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you know, it's always nice when you see the uh, one of the side characters from the anime Dota 2 Dragon's Blood <laughs> mm -hmm. showing up, you know? Now we need to have a Luna on the other side, so that way they can. Uh, was that a spoiler? I shouldn't. Ha I shouldn't have it said is that. Dyer's band. I don't I think, think we'll see it think ever. I don't think anyone cares at the point. We're we're like. Except that one guy in chat who is now going to have a vendetta against me. Like, no, way to go, Moxie, spoiling everything. It's been like seven months since the anime came out, or something like that. If you don't know what characters are in the anime yet, uh, you, you weren't gonna. You don't care. You don't. You weren't gonna watch it. It's not like we're really spoiling Ten much. Or anything. What if we have new viewers, Perch? Look at the new viewers who didn't know that there was an anime Five on Netflix called Dota 2 Dragon's Blood. Guys, go on anime.com slash Netflix. Flix, that's not the URL. Uh, <laughs> I, just, uh, I messed it up at the start totally and I was like, I gotta spin up, this. Totally anime.com slash Netflix. <laughs> Do not go there. We don't know what's actually there. That's Do true. not go there. Whitehouse.com. Uh, or sorry, dot com. <laughs> it's a throwback, guys. Moxie's gonna get that joke. Oh my god. Um, it's actually clean there now. You're, you're safe. Um, Night Stalker and Marana. Um, Night Stalker is seen as uh, definitely a potential or strong pick. Potentially good or strong it pick. Uh, it's not an every game kind of thing, but if Alliance wants to go with some vision control, some initiation, it can be really good. Um, just like jumping in the middle of like an IO pairing and, and silencing both of those guys is going to be kind of nice to pay on the, the hero they're pairing with. But the question is, who is the pairing? Is it Lycan? I mean, hypothetically, you could, because then you'd be like a really fast ball light. But and, and liking core is certainly something I expect to see like maybe once or something, because you can you can switch up. Be like, aha, it's not like, like an offlane like to it's carry. I feel like be DM though on this. I really have this strong feeling. Uh, but let's look at their bands. They banned Invoker, the IO Invoker. Whew, that's a combo right there. IO Razor actually can be quite good uh, in terms of running at your opponents. The dangerous part is that like Razor's like kind of an insane run at you hero, and IO's like I don't really want to go that hard, buddy. You know. Second. That well, you want to always be skirting on the outsides, and if you're going a mile a minute, you know, <laughs> facing after someone, you're just like, yeah, we right at the. You have to really yeah. know IOL, I feel. Yeah, that's true. That I, I want to play on the edge, going in and out. And Razor's like, I would like to be on top of the enemy hero directly. In, in the middle of all of and them. And no matter yes. what happens, once I once I latch on, I'm not leaving. I'm going with them all mm -hmm. the way. 
Oh, it's leashes on leashes on leashes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. A little bit of like a, a centipede. Ten seconds. Whatever it's Horrifying. Called. What's that movie? Horrifying. Five you know, I, We know Jenkins and uh, Sons fan are in here, and we know you guys are really sad about that, so we wanted to bring the, the poop jokes to T.I. <laughs> I didn't want to bring the poop jokes. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Why did I get roped into this? Help, this is my first T.I. purchase sabotaging I would me. love to say this. You're Look, I just want you to know you're allowed to swear, as of what Valve said a couple years ago, and it's probably still the same rule. Let's test it. <laughs> no, I am not open. No, <laughs> no, no. Kidding. No, no. This is, feels like a trap. <laughs> um, TV band. Uh, as well, and Medusa. So those are the uh, high-damage, semi-ranged heroes green. that are going to be able to turn out objectives after they get good Five map control from either Night Stalker ulti kills or and dives or Murana ones. So those make some sense. Uh, Slark Ban, great pairing with Io, uh, very effective laning against Night Stalker during the daytime. Night Stalker is a, 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 basically a creep during the daytime. And Slark could abuse him really well. So that makes sense to ban that as an pairing. Uh, the obvious ones are still what Gyro and Ursa, I guess, as other IO pairings. But there it is, Bane IO. <laughs> the classic combo. Oh my gosh, it's the Dota 2 anime <laughs> Dragon it Blood. It's happening. Well, they got to pick Dragon Knight now, and I, I just don't know about that one. But Io Luna is very good, too. Um, in, in some ways, a little bit better than it used to be. Not that it hasn't. Anyway, you get Spell Amp when you uh, tether to somebody on Io, so it can make your Eclipse really effective. The only downside to the Io Luna combo Five is that um, you can farm fast, but it kind of like leaves Luna a little underleveled, and she can already farm really fast by herself. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Io jump around. And in fact, with the Bane and the Io, it's very likely to be Bane Luna. Bane Luna is a fantastic lane. It's so good to play this. Bane's already like a strong laner. He can Nightmare. And now he's got extra damage from Luna Aura. It's like a disgustingly good lane. Um, very strong at winning lanes. And certainly something that's really appropriate for having to deal with a nice worker. So I like I like the Bane Luna. And then later on, it'll become Io Luna. So it's just going to be like Io Lycan. Lycan's literally going to regen all the damage he takes. Mm. Um, and uh, Luna Bane's going to be safe. And then uh, VP is going to have to pick their mid hero first here, unfortunately. So Alliance will get the counter pick. But um, Morphling pick itself looks pretty good. Not the Five best seconds. transform steel type of stuff, but... Um, it's a Nico Baby classic. Like he really, True. I think this is actually his favorite hero, if I recall correctly. Mm. It's not the best heroes to transform into, but um, unless you did like Night Stalker when he used ulti, that'd be kind of cool. Turn into Night Stalker, turn on the silence, run a little bit. But I feel like Luna has back. such an edge too, like being able to see in the night as well. Like that is true, but it's, it's not, not that huge of a deal. But it well, is, it is a bonus. Y it is, yeah, and y yeah, you reduce your opponent's night vision when you use Night Stalker ulti. But Night Stalker's value is more about being able to see everything yourself, not so much restricting true. vision. Um, it and it's easier to forget that trope sometimes because Night Stalker ulti used to reduce your vision actually. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I hated that. Yeah, it was kind of rough. It was kind of like oh, I really can't see anything it right now. Um, but yeah, the Night Stalker is like I pop my ulti, I see where everybody is, and now we can make perfect team fight decisions for 30 seconds because we should have perfect information basically. So, but but you're right, Luna Luna Aura does give everybody night vision, and it's a it's a decent solution for that, especially if somebody can like get on a cliff or. Um, you'll, you know, you're going to see Night Stalker coming more often on, on flat, even ground, which is definitely advantageous Five sometimes. So. The only downside is when you eclipse, don't you make it nighttime? You do make it nighttime, yes. Okay, so that could be bad if you're trying to eclipse Night Stalker. You could run away in that exact moment. Um, Morphling, I think, is going to lane very well against Lycan. High armor. Lycan doesn't really harass that much, so Morphling was not a weak laner, but he should be able to abuse this. Tons of physical damage. So I think they're pretty happy seeing Morphling versus Lycan matchup. Because mm -hmm. um, if Morphling has a good start, <coughs> who's going to gank him? To it's bang. not going to be Luna. It's not going to max Lucent Beam. It's going to have to be whatever mid-hero VP picks or maybe like a grip. Because right now their gank is like pretty bad the first 10 minutes. Like they'll have strong laning uh, for the safe lane, the Luna Bane. But other than that... Lycan's going to hit creeps, Io's going to stack, Luna's going to clear the stacks, then Io will maybe like help Luna remain. clear stacks earlier and faster, but it, VP's going to need some like Five strong gank hero. Uh, Storm, I was thinking pick. Void Spirit right now, that's like the perfect hero for like moving around the map, getting stuff done. Um, ban the Spirit heroes, let's see what they go for. Puck. That works, I mean we saw how uh, GPK played last game. Definitely will uh, be able to provide some control, some silence. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of bursts, which is nice, too. And the other nice thing is that Puck's 
a little hard to kill, and Alliance's disable is not excellent right mm -hmm. now. Um, outside Damn, of like Night Stalker Silence, and to like a disable follow up would be nice. That part's really nice, but like landing Five air on puck pretty hard, remain. landing Snapfire Cookie on 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 him pretty hard, and I would say Morphling. Like puck isn't that amazing against Alliance's heroes. What they uh, that's not necessarily true, I guess. I feel like. Puck's pretty good against like Night Stalker, Marana, Snapfire. It's not so great against Morphling, but it, it's it's a great puck pick. I like that. Um, it just means that VP should have less carry potential than they would have with like a Void Spirit or a Storm, mm -hmm. who usually go a little harder. But even that isn't necessarily true because last game we saw GPK still like, like if, if you get kills and you don't die, you're just gonna have a net worth advantage. And GPK is amazing, amazing player. Oh my it's god! Anime, blood, anime, anime <laughs> slash Netflix slash. Dota Dragon's Blood. <laughs> Put it into your browser. Turn off the stream right now. Get acquainted with our friends. Unfortunately, it does not have the persona, um, which is a pretty big downer. But um, and let's anime it up. You want to just quote? I can like Google voice lines from the movie if you or the the anime if you want. Do it. Do it. All you right. said that you you <laughs> you offer it up. Dota to Netflix dot com <laughs> slash anime fun quotes. Dota to anime. Oh, this is gonna be good. Quotes. Weird, nothing came up. That's too bad. That's incorrect. What? <laughs> Man. That's really unfortunate. For some reason, Google is down. I mean, the internet these days, the websites just crash all the time. Twitch is a liar. Twitch unreliable. Twitter unreliable. Facebook unreliable. What else went down? WhatsApp. Instagram. Uh, How are we gonna That's someone telling you a liar. I'm just going right to I'm just gonna have to watch the anime later tonight and take notes. That's... That's how I do my homework. Nico yep. Baby does have that sick morphling that set. That is really cool. The shark set. It I makes mean, he sense. He has to, right? He's a shark. He loves them shark lines. Um, all right. Talking about Dragonite. Dragonite traditionally is the puck counter on paper. As we said this a million times on panels when puck was godly. Because when puck leaves the Landigo gank, you just take the tower as Dragonite. You do mm -hmm. a lot of damage, right? Um, they don't have the greatest heroes to be able to rotate and try to put pressure on Dragonite, which is another way to try to alleviate that sort of pressure is you mm -hmm. gank him when he hits six so that way he's not allowed to take the tower. Exactly, yeah. Either gank him or just be like, hello, I am here as the support. And you're like, oh, I don't want to hit that tower because you're going to initiate him and TP like an offlaner and then kill me. Um, so yeah, just keeping him away when he uses ulti is a great way to limit him. With that said though, Dragonite's win rate's not so good. He he trended pretty hard the last like eight months or something like that. He got a moderate amount of nurse, much like Puck. So um, the downside is that Dragonite's still in a weaker place. Um, his Dragon Blood talent unfortunately has been reduced to be less effective despite it being the anime name you think they just leave that one untouched but too much regen on the hero um he was just <laughs> too survivable uh, but he's still a, still an effective hero in the right game he's be great he's also excellent with the lineup like it's not even just like oh he's great against Buck. he's great with uh with piranha you get a blink dagger at a reasonable time, you blink in, you stun a guy, you arrow them, boom, you get a fight. What are you laughing at? He's also about? great with Marana in the Dota 2 anime. Wow, Dragon's you are blood. so right. I'm so sorry. I will I will try to, to rein it in. <laughs> but yeah, that gives them, you know, it, it makes us face creators, yes. which is really oh, nice. nice for Nico Baby. He's going to be able to allow to farming. Um, you've got the tower so pressure that comes along. And it's also just a very tanky hero. However, on the flip side of that, a lot of uh, a lot of pressure on Nico Baby to make sure that he has the physical damage necessary to be able to carry this game. Let's see if they can find the engagements. They have the vision advantage due to Night Stalker. That is a pretty... I like that they changed the... The nighttime free. Yeah, I like yeah, me that too, a lot. Because it increases the chance that you have fights anyways. Whereas before you'd be like, oh, I see you across the river. I'm definitely Wait, not going the river. Back. Now it's like, oh shit. I'm, uh, I might as well stay for the bounty like this, you know? Unless Gore will be able to snap it up. And then he is a very large creep for the next, uh, how many minutes? What are you talking about? He's playing Night Stalker. Oh, yes, yes. It is the, the, the Night Stalker. Dude. Yes. He's got five minutes of pain. That's for sure. <laughs> Save playing four position pain, actually. Very interesting. Um, Bane traditionally doesn't scale that great is a four, but you know, there's there's decent items you can buy that like like we said earlier today, Ags on Bane can be good. He's gone for lots of stats just to make his hero even better. And then in fact they're trial laning here. They're gonna just do a Lycan in the safe lane, which is gonna be pretty safe to get last hits. And then uh, Yeah. We'll see how this works out for him. They they're gonna prevent S4 from going to his creep wave, so you know he's gonna continue being a creep here. The poor guy. I mean, this was not going to be a super comfortable lane for him anyway, so I feel like even as long as he doesn't die repeatedly, which is, again, the, usually the purpose of having a tri-lane, right, is to be very aggressive, I think they're fine with it over on the side of the line. 
Yeah, as long as S4 gets some levels, it will be relatively okay, and Houndskin can always just leave an arrow creeps here and there, so that part will be okay too. But so far, houndskin has been guaranteeing some of the experience. Um, and yeah, but they're going to reset now. Safe ends up TPing back to the safe lane. He was just trying to like limit um, some of the advantage that S4 could get by keeping him out of lane a little bit longer, which was effectively done. Do you like the way that this has... Uh kind of gotten changed around here with having the Luna up here to my way. the Io. Um, it probably had to do with like scouting lane setups uh, for somebody. It was probably that Alliance wanted this lane setup because they had this like, really deep ward on the cliff. They probably saw a DM coming bottom and then they said like, oh, well, if he's there, we want a lane more fling. So that's why I said in the draft as well. It's like, it, more fling against, um, against Lycan sounds pretty good to me. You wouldn't want to play more fling against Luna because you're going to have to get fought all the time. But he's basically going to take no harassment now and thus can be like full agimorphed and getting good last hits. So that's probably why S4 got here late and thus couldn't TP. If he TPs to the lane, instead of walks past, then they just TP Luna bottom, and then S4 stuck, and they TP um, Lycan top, and then it's like Lycan versus Night Stalker, which Lycan wants. So basically, S4 had to be punished in this moment, so I would say Alliance is happy with the lane matchups, and I don't think BP cares that much for him. Absolutely okay. not. Hopefully you guys followed all that. Lane swapping stuff is a little bit, it's a little bit tricky. Oh wow, Limp getting two points and breathe fire. Pretty atypical right now. A lot of people just get like lots of dragon blood, but I, I think he just realized like I just I want to farm. Mm -hmm. um, and this is like the original way to play DK, but the last like year it's a lot of armor points. Lose together, win together, oh, stay together, together, stay together, stay together. Stay together. Stay together. Stay quiet otherwise, though. As I say that, save is uh, taking some harass here from FNG and Nico Baby. But of course, there's only so much that they can do. So he does have a couple tangos on him still. Should be able to just regen back up again. And that was, uh, you know, just a little side distraction here. So DM could hit a couple more creeps and not take as much damage. This is a double range lane. He's going to be doing pretty even. Save. That's very fire. Turns around. Brain sap taunting his way out here. Looks like he's absolutely fine. Okay, still a lot of damage, though. It's going to force him to go back. Uh, doesn't have enough tangos to offset this. Uh, Limp's doing great, by the way. 19 last hits, 5 denies. So he's doing better than uh, Puck is. But, uh, you know, he's got this damage advantage. And slight damage advantage and breathe fire also reduces damage. So as long as he breathe fires on GPK. And generally, Pucks don't like getting phase shift too much. And if they do, they only have, like, one point. The cooldown's a lot longer. It's 8 seconds. So it's probably just easier in Limp's mind to abuse breathe fire to um, guarantee that GPK has less damage. So I think that's why he's doing a bit better. And I believe Limp is classically a DK player, if I'm not mistaken, too. Yes. So. He played a lot of this during DPC. Uh, you know, his tiny is really, like, world, I would say world-renowned. Yeah, for sure. As well, but that's just a hero that we're probably not going to be able to see unless something else rises in popularity. Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, they get both bunny as well. They're doing a good job controlling those. So nothing for GPK. Uh, with that said, he's got a lot of stuff sitting at the moment. He's going to be completely fine. But um, Last hit-wise, I feel like pretty even across the map. Pretty low for S4 at 12 and 17 for the Lycan. So basically both players, their offlaners are a little bit limited here. But almost night time. Nice Stalker's level 4. We'll see what he goes for in terms of lane pressure. I don't necessarily see them killing Io, but yeah, never know. I don't really see them, like, getting super, super aggressive, personally, unless they land, like, a really nice arrow, especially now that S4 is being forced back, forced to uh, do some of this regening. It's I'm just not sure how aggressive they're actually going to be. The couriers are just dropping left and right right now. Ooh, that was a big one. That was a, a whole, a crown and two clarities, actually. That's going to mean that Lycan can't summon nearly as many wolves in the next uh, two minutes, basically, where, I mean, that's like two summons of wolves right there. He just lost, and he just cast one. He's, he's down to his last set of wolves for a bit. Um, tough for him in terms of like lane stability, scouting, all that stuff. Um, GPK not quite six. Limp is though. See how uh, committed Limp gets to pushing this creep wave, but GPK is going to do his best to offset that by pushing himself. I think it's crazy the fact that you know there's Night Stalker in this game, and we were like, you know, oh, do you think he's going to get aggressive? Enough? It's actually Nightfall and Kingslayer that are getting ultra aggressive, and they've got a Cardi wave, and they're pushing. Putting so much down. 
Flare, of course, just with the overcharge. Duke and Hans got an FNG making their own rotation. Just gonna immediately get more, but oh, there it is. A nice cookie coming out from FNG. He's got his angles, he does his geometry. And that's going to be our first blood at 553 it minutes. Was that was really well done how they did that. Like, run the Night Stalker after the IO, force him to retether, and once he retethers, like, you know exactly where he's gonna be. You land that great cookie stun, get the nice Star Storm off, and Hanskin's playing this lane great. Up, uh, They're basically just saying, like, we know this is going to be hard. S4 is going to get beat up. And we're just going to arrow range creeps, get levels. Nico Baby pressured a little bit on the bot lane, but realistically, they, they can't. They literally cannot kill this guy. He's a little slow movement speed-wise because he doesn't bought boots yet, but, like, he's just trying to finish his Morbid Mask. Once he finishes that, his lane is more or less guaranteed. I feel like it's just a situation where, although DM, of course, did lose that courier, um, he just kind of wants to park himself in this lane and just continuously push, right? This was cool by VP, though. Yeah, like you're, yeah, continuously pushes and park there is really good to do. But if uh, if um, they hadn't rotated Hanskin here, that was really well done. Boy, VP did. They pushed him past the creep wave. He wasn't able to pull the creep wave past. The, that means the catapult stays alive. But um, with Hanskin teeping in and arrowing the, the catapult, this tower actually stays alive. The tower legitimately would be dead right now if Hanskin didn't have TP or hadn't rotated here. It was a really big deal. Hanskin's definitely holding this game together right now. Surprised that we haven't seen any big rotations. I guess it's it's like you said, it's the DK effect. You don't want to yeah. leave your tower because you know that he's going to pop dragon form. He's going to start pushing. Uh, so I guess that's why GPK is kind of been chilling because it doesn't seem like anyone's really super suffering here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone's doing it decent. Just number. But there's uh, there's always going to be space for this. I mean, Night Stalker being a little bit behind is uh, is slightly rough, but ultimately, um, yeah, Puck a little bit low on mana so makes his rotations feel a little bit weird because he has to spam so much to keep Limp away from the tower. Um, tower did take some damage from Limp's first ulti. I completely missed it, but he's he's, he's off cooldown again now. So we'll see if he tries to commit to, to pushing the tower. Makes this rotation, throws out the nightmare. Save it for The pop is followed up with a nice arrow. There's not really anything that GPK can do here. King Slayer also makes a rotation. I think it's a little bit more regen over on GPK. But they pop the dragon form, they get a kill, but they haven't managed to put the pressure on the tower just yet, so. It's hard. They're just going to keep nuking. GPK just orbs every single creep wave here. They're hoping to get maybe a catch there with the. With the cookie, Puck into uh, Dragon Sun, yeah, they actually find it on server war too. That was a really good read. So they'll do some damage to tower. Not, uh, they won't be an insane amount, but Nightfall may dive top with the M though. They're going for the run in at S4. He's gone for lots of points, 100 in the net. He wants the movement speed to make up for his slightly less his lower net worth, but tower will die top. So this tower is absolutely crumbling. Oh, yes, that. Oh, I forgot about that taunt. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the cat one. The cat one, right. yeah, there's two. Because there's the one where she's got like the glaze and it makes like a helicopter noise, and then you've got the one that's the. That's mad, it's completed on Luna, and you can see Sage just backing up. They're making some moves over to this bottom tower. They have to expect it, though. Radiance bottom tower. Yeah, for sure. It's it's very common to do this, especially with Nico Baby here. Tons of physical damage. He's the catapult effectively, um, and with the Morbid Mass, his life still so strong. So there's it's not too common right now that Morphling gets kind of like a free lane like this in my experience. Um, you're almost always pressured. You just don't really like crush your lanes like you used to consistently. Maybe not always crush your lanes, but pretty much always have an okay time. It doesn't always happen on Morphling, but if you can just have a lane like this where you're free farm. It puts you in a much better place to Oh, guess who's here? GPK gets the Dream Coil off. FNG's gonna hop forward. Io joining in on this tether. Hans can try very hard, but not gonna be able to survive this. Now FNG juice around the corner. GPK doesn't mind the juice. He can find him very easily. Did a great job with saving Orb there is so important because otherwise FNG could juke you and end up going north thinking he's there, but get that easy vision to check your corners and uh, everything's gonna be safe. So, once again, Nico continues hitting the creeps. His net worth is a little bit, just an inch behind uh, some of the other players, but um, everything else is going good. Uh, they've got a little bit more damage on the enemy tower. His net worth is surprisingly pretty close to Luna's. I don't know why it's so high, but damn, good for you, Lim. Must be hitting a lot of small creeps or something. Yes, he was hitting a lot of the camps off the side. He was even when uh, the puck was trying to go and clear off the camps over here. He would just go over brief fire and get the last hit. Bottom lane though, they're trying to make a play and it looks like they should be able to succeed and take down safe. 
ammo that is, of course, already. Hunter and the Knight that got popped. They're still hunting, seeing if there's anybody else in this area, but uh, most of the side of VP, either in the mid lane or in the top. And they do have a nice ward over here, so they will recognize that. Yeah, that was actually a pretty good rotation. There's uh, the scan, too. So they got that. They got the kill. They're gonna take the safe lane and in the mid at the, the exact same time. DK who just sat mid all game gets the mid tower. So pretty good moment there for, for them on the alliance side. And now probably a blink dagger coming too. I would guess on the dragon. Yep, there's this blink dagger coming. And now is where the real fight fighting is gonna start happening a lot because he's just gonna be blink stunning with arrow follow up, and we'll see if they can hold those uh, or limit those deaths from happening. King Slayer's just walking his little piggy over here. Oh, I hate that they added that sound. I actually really hate that they added that sound. Yeah, it's so annoying. I think you'd get used to it after like the fourth time you turned yourself into piggy, be like, oh god, here it comes. I'm, gonna be a pig. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it'd be, I'd squeal the first time. Maybe the first like four times, but the fifth time I'd be like, alright. It hurts. Do you think it's like a transmutation where like you feel all your bones just like crumpling Ugh. up? Yeah, that w that doesn't sound very pleasant. <laughs> Unless it like dis it's like let's just be do the play thing and disconnect your nerves first before we transfer your whole body. Yeah, I appreciate the save again. The jump forward here from Limp with that blink, followed up with the arrow, and that's a quick and easy pick off and some party damage. Middle lane, Dream Quest gonna get used by GPK. They see FNG. Do they have the detection though? Oh, that's a big mistake. Huge mistake not having the vision here. They don't have any vision for the Invis puck, but that that's more. Understandable. That man, the fact that they kept FNG alive. Because when he was dying, I was like, man, that would have been really nice for Alliance to have Mortimer's kiss. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's just oh, no, nothing. Get some Rana. That's a that's a that's a pretty big mistake. That's a that's a, a TI nice. level mistake you don't want to make. Nice all top lane pressure being placed over onto S4. You've got DM running after him with all of these creeps. He's gonna follow him deep into the woods and uh, keep tabs on him. And eventually, down he'll go. Nicely done. Uh, did you put the shapeshifter <laughs> well, on mid or something? Yeah, he probably used it in the mid fight and then ended up running off. That makes sense. Okay. Well, DM's doing great. Uh, had a little bit of a rough start, but he's been hitting creeps very successfully since then. Um, Morphling's now worth is still pretty good. Not like the most incredible thing I've ever seen. It hasn't gotten a neutral item yet. I'm very confused on that. Did they lose one or something? No, oh, dire team. There's a shovel. Dig man. Um, it's a pig pole on Dragonite. I mean, they're not the greatest neutral items for Morphling, but uh, maybe he's just not noticing that. It's just a shovel. It's not that incredible. He might die here, though. Definitely possible. He's got the signs. I got the dream coil. They have the damage. Rough one. You know, I'm going to say big old mistake. That was such a huge mistake. He literally attacked the sentry two times before starting his morph shift. You know what that means? That means he had vision, and that means he saw the freaking puck. Am I wrong? That's what it felt like to me. So maybe he was expecting that something was about to happen, but just didn't think fast enough? I don't know. I don't know. Or, or maybe, like, puck was about to go in the sentry, and then he jaunted or something. Maybe the time that he had to react was a lot smaller than I expected it to be. That's very, very likely. But unfortunate that he dies there. Um, his net worth was not quite going crazy like Luna's was, and now it's just going to continue lagging behind a little bit, unfortunately. That is a little bit <laughs> well, scary, especially because we know what a threat Luna becomes at that mid-game area. Yeah, that's true. Hans gonna really wants to arrow this creep, but these damn wolves are in the way. There we go. Look at him. Damn wolf. Nope, there's not. You can't instantly create a new one. That's okay. Smoke there's coming out from the side of Alliance. They know that they're in their woods, and they want to flush them out. Of course, Link does have a blink dagger. Blink's done right away. I'm gonna go with Moonlight Shadow on top of it. Down the silence. DM. Those Motor kisses are, are very, very close here. Uh, okay, there we go. There's a kill. They were going after safe. They spotted themselves someone else, and they knew that the cleanup crew was there, so they'll be able to get themselves two kills. Nicely done. They get the cleanup. Morphling does not get ganked in the meantime. Look at which GPK is perfect. though. Look at GPK and look at Kingslayer. Just how they're haunting this bottom area because they know that if he's not there, somewhere else. I mean, the more kills you can get on Morphling this early in the game, it's a big advantage because you know later on his stats become so much higher. He's a much harder kill. Look at this. Let's see how safe Nico plays it. He's not going super safe. But once again, like if he just starts morphing, he's basically fine. Um, they don't, unless he gets gripped. He has to get like gripped or silenced without morphine while being heavily agility morphed and that's when he dies. So I think that's the thing they're aiming for, just this, this kind of advantage. And even though Luna had, didn't die there, getting those pickoffs um, are still going to help catch up Morphling. Like, because Morphling is, 
If he's difficult to kill, his matchup will be good. You just got to keep that going. It's all over here. GPK, he teleported in. That's a long range arrow, but does manage to go and uh, tuck out a little bit. Follow up with the Dream Coil. Both of them going to snap over an S4 and FNG as High Hook Fail just runs back in. They get the Nightmare off, they get the Eclipse, and that hurt is dead on the side of Alliance. That's a great try, but not enough stun duration. Um, I mean, if he has more points than Dragon Tail, maybe it's possible, uh -oh. but I don't blame oh, him. Oh, Hanskin, he gets Fiend's Gripped. Science gets to watch GPK at the last second. He's going to snap up that regen rune. That beautiful regen. Great grip. Chrome save to grab that one. And that's a tier one tower die. And this is the moment that we may think back on if Alliance loses this game. They're like, man, they were doing so good, but then they just they thought they were going to get that puck. They didn't land the arrow in time, and boom, that's that's a big moment. Because if they're not gripped, like, Night Stalker definitely doesn't die. Or, I'm sorry, not gripped, uh, foiled. Night Stalker definitely doesn't die. Maybe Snapfire dies, but it's not that bad. And then without uh, Night Stalker dying, maybe you don't see Marana dying in the river. Like, it, it's a really big cascading effect on their tier one tower. Maybe dies, but probably doesn't. Um, just at all really makes a big difference. S4 hunting, though, he's got great net vision. I don't know if he sees Puck. Can you jump out of this? I assume you can, yeah. Yeah, you can jump while you're in a disabled field as Puck. And now they're going to counter hunt. Looking for Limp. They will see him. They he doesn't know. Nico, baby. Waveforming right forward here. Ooh, just a little bit off the mark here from GPK. Not expect him to waveform like that, so. Perhaps saving his life with that one little mistake. S4, though. Sees Nightfall, sees King Slayer. But now they're going to have to back off. These Lycan creeps are very scary, very big. Look at this jump up over to the high ground here. S4, they have the dust, but of course he's got the Ascension. He's going to be able to fly up and around the pit. Hanskin looking to see if he can make anything happen. We'll toss out a casual arrow. We'll land over on a wolf. Sile one at least. Killed. Not the worst One's use of the ulti. Nico baby already nightmared here. Follow up. They have the silence. They have the control. Nicely done. DM dies on the back side without boots. They run him down. Here comes the relocate. Coming in for the reload. Land over here, Limp with that piggy pole running away from GPK. He's pretty tanky, but there's also the silence. Hans gonna get a chase down here by Nightfall. The dead Marana. Blink forward here again. There's a John here from GPK. They have so much damage, actually. You know, we look at Limp and we think that he's such a tanky boy, but in reality, he's really not. Rough one. Uh, losing Morphling before that with the chain silences is very costly. Now losing the rest of their, their, their cores as well. Uh, Really tough. Still no BKB yet on the DK, which maybe wouldn't have helped him survive. But I mean, not great to use Night Stalker ulti in that circumstance. If, if nobody else gets caught, though, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you lose some momentum, but the, just people can't die like this. They miss the arrow on the relocate as well. Just some more mistakes coming from Alliance consistently. That's what we're seeing. Alliance still an excellent team, but. You gotta make less mistakes than your opponents in almost all circumstances. We're just not seeing that from Alliance today. I mean, Nico, baby. Again, it comes down to a lot of this aggression. As uh, Nightfall will be able to scare himself with Aegis, but the, just the way that they hunt him constantly. You're yeah. seeing him all over. And this is something that Alliance does quite a bit is the 4 Protect 1 strat, where they put a lot of pressure on Nico, baby to be the one to physically carry. And sometimes it works, but in this case, it feels like BP kind of have figured out the. DM though, he's gonna try to run away. It's pretty fast. Dyer's Not has terrible. They would love to kill, obviously, but he still pops his ulti, Somewhere. so that costs him a bit. Uh, if they can kill the Granite Bolt, that'd be kind of nice. But that's a tanky boy, and he's running. Uh, Morphling might get gripped. He oh, does. The beans grip, but they have a reload coming in. Turn right back around. And all the tips coming out against Nico. It's tip warfare, very strong in this game for BP. But this is this is the the amount of the amount of uh, mess with uh, Nico they've been able to do is insane. It's like they were suspecting it though. They go right back to where they reload out from. King Slayer does get arrow, so it looks like he is going to end up falling. You still have safe nearby though. So there's a lot of heroes that are trying to go and just make something out of the fact that they know that Nightfall and Kingslayer are going to be there, but they're just not able to do it. Casual big grenade on the ground. Hello. Limp, blink forward again over onto Nightfall. GPK though, is he set it up though? Or no, it's wow, gonna be the died. Aegis going down. Turn back out here. They've got those Mortimer kisses. Nightfall's back up and running, and he looks like he wants blood now. Career yeah. does fall, that is of course the gem. 
on it. Oh, it's GPK's crit. Oh, that's unfortunate, actually. FNG did not notice the gem. And he started TPing because he knew that he's like, oh, I got to get this and run. But uh, maybe we're going to see S4 die here. He Dodges definitely new. wants it. Question is, can they get him fast enough? Because they definitely do not have any way to hold him in place with just the puck. The, and, uh, the fake grenade he stole did 20 movement speed. It. That's the only reason he's it. Clear. I think it was an enemy one, right? Pretty sure. You got to pick up your stuff, guys. It was. It was a radiant fake grenade. Now gone. I think Limp linked in, and that's where we had just noticed that the pay grenade was on the ground. I wonder if it's like a glaive bounce or something that happened. I mean, he was there farming, and then it probably was flying through there as he blinked stun, kind of a thing. Possibly. It's just unfortunate timing for them. Um, oh, you even want the damage reduction on uh, Breathe Fire in this game, Andre. Right? Just wants to affect the fight in a good way. They're still just looking, uh -oh. itching for the fight. They find S4. Nightmare to start off everything, and look at this damage coming out from Nightfall. Holy cow. Good luck during daytime. Good luck indeed. 3k well, gold it's nighttime to him now. That, that's that's true. That's a good. One. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> so, Bottom lane, Hanskins getting chased a bit. DM searching over here with his little army. You have to go for the old leap to safety. Aww. It just feels like every game, VP is just Aww. like getting a small advantage, and then they just sit on the enemy triangle. Like the the parts between the the tier two towers, they play those areas so hard. Everyone has to split push against them, and eventually they make a team fight mistake. But VP just eventually executes better, is what we're consistently seeing. It's a good play style. It's a, it's how you close out games, get an advantage, and then you know you gotta try to collect all kill all the rats. Almost Ooh, catchy. Limp, limp just a little bit too fast here. Does have, of course, the Dream Coil. And DK is going to be able to... Okay. Ah! They use the Dream Coil. They cancel it out. The rest of the team is here. They have the IO to help just burst out that damage. And King Slayer gets to kill on Dragon Knight. Obviously, he could have BKB TP. And maybe he thought it wasn't worth it, but I'm, I'm a little surprised, to be honest. You think um, it was worth it? Uh... No, oh, maybe not. He's not dead for that one. just leapt right forward in front of Nightfall. Hello? This is not good for you, Hansky. That's just a free kill. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I do that right? Is that, is that a thing? Slack says. Oh, no. No, it's not the same. Sorry, Bird. You do it. Oh, no. It's more like a Slack thing. I'd have to screech a little Yours bit more, too. Yours is worse. Too. Like, your tone is fine, but it's not accurate to the... I like haven't frustration, not like I haven't uh, like listened to it. Perplexed that happiness. Is what I got. Oh up. no! It's kind of like a black thing. I don't know. Oh, I mean his voice line in game. Oh, the one in game. I haven't listened to it that much. I just told you. All right, I'll let it go. VP, they're good guys. If that wasn't obvious, very strong team. Making stuff happen. They got a gem. Puck hasn't died yet. <laughs> Well, GPK is good at Dota. Who knew? Everybody did. Everybody knew that. Smoke play coming out from Alliance. Looks like they're going to try to retake their jungle. It's difficult, though. Limp, though, finding this opening immediately over onto DM. Great Arrow block. will connect, so they should be able to just obliterate him very quickly. No! He's still alive. They follow up with the Dream Quad. The BKBs are coming out now, but Nightfall, look at this damage coming out. Nico, baby, he can't survive this. It's too much burst damage. As they're just chased back. Safe does eventually fall here, but Nightfall, they're just chasing after a limp now. GPK <laughs> leading the hunt. It's just too much for them to handle. It's a double kill now for Nightfall. Aww. Do end up killing DM in the end, uh, but Aww. losing Morphling and the Dragonite, that doesn't feel good in the slightest. GPK still hunting. Aeondis going to buy him some time. We'll see if he can get out of this. I don't think so. He's going to be silenced for a bit. <gasps> they feel like they're a little... Oh, the relocate FNG. It's a godlike nightfall. This guy. Uh, running, I really recommend running nightfall in fantasy, guys. It's a, <laughs> yeah, apparently. That GPK too, man. We've got, what, 9 0 yeah. 3 currently on this Luna? Let me just go over to the old fantasy Six points zero tab. And 7 for Fifth. GPK. Onskin has 14.3 points. I don't know how he's got all that. I mean, he did play really, really good early. Well, there's the BKB coming up from S4, but there's just too much damage yet again. They do manage to finally take down King Slayer. Nightfall now a little worried here. They do have five back on the aisle if they want to try, but they're going to be able to lock him down, hold him into place for a little bit longer. BKB not up for another couple seconds if he wants to try to go and pop it. Looks like he's not even going to bother. So Alliance does manage to hold, but they still have a they still have this Thunder Hide who's just chewing away over at this one little part of the He actually is destroying the basement. 
Yeah, indeed. There's the sweet <laughs> thrown out by FNG. Save needs to be so careful. We'll see the cheese on the ground. Be like, he was here. He was here. There are rappers. <laughs> Nature's wax wrapper, of course. Yep. Oh, FNG might find him. He He's sees him. And he found him over in the corner of the blink board from Limp. And there's the waveform. Should be an easy kill for Nico, baby. He's trapped in by FNG. <laughs> All right. Well. They got some kills, they held. The, the barracks is alive, the male barracks almost died, but it's going to regen. If they can just keep the game about even for the next five or so minutes, they're going to be sitting all right in terms of uh, impact on the map. Um, let those heal up. S4 is still kind of struggling here, but he's doing his job. He's running in and creating some <laughs> openings for his team, and that's what matters in a lot of cases. So it's good to see aggression here over on FNG, but perhaps it was baited. Go for Moonlight Shadow. Okay, takes the same amount. That's the Aeon just to go get wrong. The rest of the team still standing nearby if they decide to overcommit on this. MMR is just a number. That's nice. Uh, increase the Aeon disc cooldown. Uh, this is a pretty early Aeon disc, so getting it to proc for its second time there, it's now at like a, over a two-minute cooldown. 145, almost the 165 level, but hey, if that's what you need to beat the Dragonite plus Murano combo, because if he doesn't buy something like an Andis, yeah, then he's, he's just going to get chain stunned uh, routinely. If he gets Lincolns, he still kind of has to worry about like Night Stalker potentially um, a little bit more heavily than he would otherwise, because if he like blink silences when they do the chain stuns, like you still die basically. Um, so good itemization considering 707. Uh, KDA for Puck, so he's still having a great match. See if they go in. They just smoked. They saw it, I think, with the ward. Got the shard online for Luna as well. Get those extra glaives bouncing everywhere. Dagon now. Puck. The IO. GPK jumps forward. Save is just blown up. But the rest of the team is here. They're going to see what they can make out of this. King Slayer trying his best to just back off. He wants to try to survive. He's very important here for Nightfall, but it looks like they'll be able to burst him down. Now it looks like Nightfall, DM, backing off a little bit. They have GPK, but they do still see FNG. They've got the dust on them, and I think they still have a gem. So GPK's Courier with his Dagon does eventually get taken down. They've popped the BKB, though, over on Nightfall. They want to try to man fight against Nico Baby, but they need to find a way to hold him into place. And they do manage to cancel out that TP. This is not looking good. Nico Baby is down. Very hopeful TP. Very, very hopeful TP. It's so hard for him to fight right now, though, against Luna with Scotty and Shard. She just hits you with a Lucent Beam. That's a two and a half second cooldown. And you get the 50% slow for three seconds. And less heal. So when he tries to shift into strength, it doesn't even doesn't work, work as well. He's only getting yeah. 60%. It is like they've hit this timing where Morphling is like unplayable now. Like he needs like an E blade or something. Like he's got a he's got a Scotty of himself for himself. It's very good against Luna. But Luna has so much net worth advantage that it's hard for him to, to remain competitive at this point. I mean, this is the issue, too. We talked about a mid-game Luna, one who was especially harmed that was taking off. Uh, the buildings are just going to fall so quickly. So Kingslayer does eat an arrow here, but doesn't care. He's tethered to Luna. He doesn't need to move. He really doesn't. He does not need so. to at all. A little poking over at FNG. Top Rax does go down. Middle already fallen. Nightfall so thinks strong. he's ready to go here. Might as well. This is just going to bounce. These towers are going to die instantly. And there's nothing that they can really do. Hanskin popping the essence ring, trying to run away, but that slow, like we talked about, is just absolutely devastating. As we're looking for an opening. Now the question is, do VP back? Is it a fake? It's a fake back. Look at them. They go right back in again. The dream coil, the waiting rift, everything being thrown over onto the backlines, over onto FNG Hanskin. They go, they try to get the glyph off. They're still going to take down Hanskin. He's going to buy back. Lip also to fall. Buying back as well, FNG. They're chasing after S4 now. Just trying to leave them out of their base. Buying just a little bit more time. The Nightmare taking a bit of a rest. Nope. He is dead as well. Mortimer Kiss is coming out. Look at this heal though coming out here from the fall. From that Kingslayer, they turn right back around again. You can see Nico, baby, he's trying everything to get them out of his face, but he just, he's not surviving long enough as they do take down FNG. Limp getting chased all the way back into the fountain now. It's another kill here for GPK. Arrow gets tossed out. Nico, baby, DM just trying to get a high five. It's not even going to be able to get it. Nico, baby's not going to survive. The GG gets called. It's BP. They are so good. They play clean across the laning stage, across the mid game. Everything looks so good for them. Like they're hitting their item timings, they're making almost no mistakes uh, from my perspective. Obviously, Alliance has some moments of brilliance as well where they play really good, but 
GPK has died zero times. Uh, Nightfall died one time. His The amount of times we've seen him die today has been very low. He's played fantastic, always high net worth. They play as a team. They do everything so well. Kingslayer had crazy saves right at the end. Oh, yeah. Kept Luna alive, barely relocated like 600 units away so he could re-engage. Like, they just, man, it just feels like, you're, it feels like, yeah, we're playing a game, it's VP, and all of a sudden it's like VP decided to win now, so you can't play Dota anymore. That's, that's what feels like keeps happening. So, wow. VP looking very impressive. Can't wait to see who else they play. Again, Alliance and Undying maybe expected bottom eight teams, but good for VP that they're winning some, some matches when they struggled with that this year online. Yeah, I mean, that was the big question mark in a lot of people's minds was that, you know, VP online... They're big, they're ferocious. They even made a meme, I believe, and then it was VP on land. It's like the cute little little teddy bear sort of yeah. thing. But this is definitely the big ferocious bear. And you mm -hmm. kind of love to see it because, again, we talked about this. VP, one of the younger squads, one of these groups that are a little less experienced, they're coming in, they're hungry, and, you know, I, I love this sort of storyline. I love being able to see a group go from, I think they were VP Prodigy, and now they've been upgraded to the next level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen now for TI. But uh, that is, of course... A, the end of this best of two VP take it very cleanly 2-0 we're going to go to a break and when we come back there's going to be a different set of casters sitting in this chair